All right, we're going to start part two of the test three review. It says on 11, factor the polynomial function f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 13x plus 10, and then solve f of x equals 0. Uh, use your calculator to find the first 0, and then use synthetic division to help break down the polynomial. All right, so basically, we'll get the first one off our calculator, we'll prove that it's a zero, and we'll find the other zeros using our work. Okay, so if you go to a calculator, I've already put it in, and if you hit graph, um, and I hit zoom decimal, so that was option four, we can actually see all three zeros. This is a third degree polynomial, and we see three there, now remember, we just we can take one off the calculator. I'm going to go ahead and take, we could do one or two. Remember, we can confirm it's a zero if we actually type in, just type in one. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I forgot to hit trace. Let's go back to graph and hit trace, and then type in one. You can see it says x equals one, and when you hit enter, it shows you that one zero is on the graph. All right, so basically, so let me switch here. We got x equals 1 is a 0. And we got that from our calculator. Oops, let's fix this just a little bit. All right. And so now we're going to divide by x minus 1. So that means 1 goes in the box, and our coefficients here are 1, 2, negative 13, and 10. So let's do the synthetic division, drop the 1. When you multiply the 1's here, you get 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 13 and 3 here is negative 10. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. And when we add that to 10, we get 0. Now that doesn't surprise us. We knew that x minus 1 was a factor. We should get a remainder of 0. So the nice thing now is as we set this polynomial equal to 0, because remember that's what we're asked to do is solve this equation when we set f of x equal to 0. By the way, that's also how we find zeros, right? But we're just solving this. And we know we can factor it as x minus 1 times the answer we got here. Now we divided by a linear term, x minus 1, and it started as a cubic function, so we're going to drop our degree 1. This will be 1x squared plus 3x minus 10. So we can factor this. Let's see, x times x will give us the x squared. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 10 that add to 3. That would be negative, actually, plus 5 and a minus 2. And um, then, you, so, it said find the first 0, then use synthetic division to help break down the polynomial. That's what we've done here. We've broken it down into its factors, but we need to solve this equation, so we're not done here. x is 1, negative 5, and 2. And so that's what we're asked to do, is to solve. But we also found the zeros. The question could have been asked, find the zeros, the other zeros. All right, number 12. Find a polynomial function of degree 4 with negative 2 as a 0 of multiplicity 3 and zero as a multiplicity, uh, as zero as a zero of multiplicity one. Be sure to multiply the factors to get a polynomial function in descending order, which is the way we normally write these. So let's go ahead and write f of x equals. So if negative two is a zero of multiplicity three, that means x plus two is a factor and it's cubed. And since 0 is a 0 of multiplicity 1, we're also going to multiply that by x. So I need to multiply some x plus 2's out here. 
So let's go ahead and multiply these guys together and then we'll multiply by x plus 2. It really doesn't matter which order we do, do it in, but we're going to get a trinomial here and we'll multiply it by this binomial. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4 which is x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now don't forget that's going to be multiplied by x plus 2. We multiplied two of these together, now we've got to multiply by one more x plus 2. So we'll distribute the x. It'll be x times each of these. So we'll get x cubed. x times 4x is 4x squared. And x times 4 is 4x. And then we're going to multiply the 2 times each of these. We'll have a 2x squared. I'm going to actually put it right here, right below the 4x squared. And uh, 2 times 4x, that's going to be 8x. We'll put it under the 4x. And 2 times 4 is 8. So we're going to end up with x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. Now keep in mind, we just found x plus 2 cubed. So we have x times what we just got here, which is x plus 2 quantity cubed. So x to the third plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. And so we're going to end up with x to the fourth, I'm just distributing now, plus 6x cubed plus 12x squared plus 8x. And that's our final function. It's got these zeros. That's our f of x. All right, on number 13, it says find a polynomial function of lowest degree that has, as some of its zeros, negative square root of 7 and 4i. Make sure you multiply out the factors to get a complete polynomial function in descending order. So again, we, uh, if we have zeros, we have factors. Now keep in mind, if x equals negative the square root of 7 is a 0, then we know its conjugate, the positive square root of 7, is also a 0. If 4i is a 0, we know negative 4i is a 0. Imaginary zeros and rational zeros come in pairs. So that's the first thing. So now we can write the corresponding factors. If negative square root of 7 is a 0, then x plus the square root of 7 is a factor. If square root of 7 is a 0, then x minus the square root of 7 is a 0. Similarly, we'll have x plus 4i and x minus 4i. So the 4i comes from here, and the x minus 4i comes from here. So when you do these multiplications, you want to multiply your conjugates first. The nice thing about conjugates here is when we multiply the inner product and the outer product, they're going to add up to zero. That's because our terms are the same. We just have opposite sides in the middle, or opposite signs. The only difference is, or the only thing we need to do is multiply the x times the x, which is x squared. And then square root of 7 times a minus square root of 7. Remember, 7 square root of 7, I'm sorry, square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7. So this is minus 7. Here, um, we're going to multiply the x's. We get x squared. Again, we don't have to worry about the inner product or the outer product. The last product, 4i times a minus 4i, is minus 16i squared. Now this is going to be x squared minus 7 times x squared. Now remember negative, or I'm sorry, i squared is negative 1. So this is negative 1 times a minus 16, that'll be plus 16. So the only thing that changes here is the sign, and the i squared goes away, because i squared is negative 1. So now we're ready to FOIL this. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. We'll multiply the outer terms. We get 16x squared. The inner product, minus 7x squared. And the last product, negative 7 times 16, 
And let's see, that would be a minus 112. So that's our function. f of x is equal to this function here. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. Uh, let's see, actually, I need to combine my like terms there. Notice 16x squared and a minus 7x squared is 9x squared. I didn't even see that before. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number 14. List all the possible rational zeros of the following polynomial functions. So for a, we have f of x equals x cubed plus 12x squared minus x plus 8. Now remember, any rational zeros by the rational zeros theorem will be of the form p over q, where the p's are factors of 8, the constant term, and our q's are the factors of the leading coefficient, basically, which is 1 here. Notice this is our leading term. The leading coefficient is 1. So our factors of 8, those are our p's, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. Remember they pair up. 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Hopefully that will help you to avoid missing any factors. And again, the factors of 1 are just 1. We, we do have the plus or minus and what I like to do is just to save myself some writing, I'll put the plus or minus out in the front. And we're going to take all of these numbers over 1. And that's actually all we have to do. 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now just keep in mind, our set includes these four numbers and their negatives. All right, let's look at part B. So here our p's are factors of 14. So that's 1, 2, 7, and 14. Our q's are factors of 4, which are 1, 2, and 4. So let's go ahead and write our possibilities here. So we're going to write all of these over 1. So that's 1, 2, 7, and 14. And then we're going to take all of these over 2. So 1 over 2 is a half. 2 over 2, well that's 1, we have 1. And then 7 over 2, we don't have that, so 7 halves. And 14 over 2, well that's 7, we already have that. And then we'll do all of these numbers over 4. 1 over 4 is a fourth. 2 over 4, well that reduces to a half, which we already have. And we have 7 over 4, that's not one that we have. And 14 over 4, that would reduce to 7 halves, which we already have. And so this is going to be it. These are our possible zeros for this polynomial function. So notice we haven't found any zeros. All we've done is use the rational zeros theorem to see what our possible zeros are. All right, let's go down to um, number 15 here. So it says find all the zeros of f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 13x minus 10. So we're going to set this equal to 0. And you can try factoring by grouping, but it doesn't work. Now it didn't say we have to use the rational zeros theorem, but we certainly could do that. We're just going to go ahead and get our first uh, 0 off the calculator. Remember, you can only get 1 off the calculator. So it's going to be x cubed, whoops, let me fix that. So 
So x cubed minus 6x squared plus 13x minus 10. Let's go ahead and hit the graph button. And it looks like we have a 0 at 2. So we can hit trace and type in 2 and hit enter. And sure enough, 2, 0 is a 0. Notice that's the only one we got. Oops. Okay, so 2. So let's see. We'll just put it over here. x equals 2 is a 0. We got that off our calculator. So that means... Uh, if we divide by x minus 2, we should get a remainder of 0. So we're going to divide by x minus 2. That should be a factor of this polynomial. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, we'll do that here. So 2 goes in the box. We've got coefficients of 1, negative 6, 13, and negative 10. We'll drop the 1. Multiply, we get 2. In the columns, we always add. We'll get negative 4 here. Multiply here, you get negative 8. When you add, you get 5. And 2 times 5 is 10. And notice we do get a remainder of 0. And so now we can factor this as x minus 2. We just divided by x minus 2. Times our answer. Now remember, uh, we were dividing a cubic function by a linear function, so it drops the degree 1. This is 1x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now, unfortunately, you can try factoring this, but you just can't find two numbers that multiply to 5 and add to negative 4. 1 and 5 are the only factors of 5, but if you made them both negative, they have to both be negative or both be positive to multiply to 5. Neither of those cases are going to add to negative 4. So there is no way to factor this. To find the other zeros, we want to set this factor equal to 0. And you could use the quadratic formula, but I'm going to complete the square since this is a nice middle term here. And so I'll start by moving the 5 to the other side, or subtract 5 on both sides. And now we'll complete the square. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. And when you square that, you get 4. So that's what we'll add to each side. As a perfect square, we would write this trinomial as x minus 2 quantity squared equals, and negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Remember, this number will always be half of this number here. It's the number you squared to get the 4. So I'll square both sides, and I'm getting, I'm losing my room here. Running out of room. So of course this side, I'm going to go ahead and go all the way over here. That would be x minus 2 because you're squaring something and then doing the opposite of taking a square root. We're going to get just what's in here. And then square root of negative 1, that's i. So this is equal to plus or minus i. We'll add 2 to both sides. We get x equals 2 plus or minus i. So we are supposed to find all the zeros. We found 2. That's the one we got off our calculator. And we have 2 plus i and 2 minus i. Notice this was a degree 3 polynomial, and notice we got three zeros. That's what we expect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there, and I'll do one last video to wrap this up.